Dr. Funk with my top 37, I think. I changed all these albums around and I forgot one album. I added it in and my list, well, I don't want to show you my list, but it has little arrows and stuff. And But I did stack the albums right here in order so I don't fuck up, but I may fuck up a number or two. And uh, there's, uh, as I see here, it says 37. So uh, I'm going to go through them right now and... Uh, Anybody out there that says, hey, where's this album? Where's that album? It's up your ass, okay? That's where it is. So, uh, this is my list, not yours. And if you disagree and I left albums out that you like, then uh, feel free to leave comments down there. I'd be interested to see comments. And who knows? Maybe somebody will point out an album. I'm like, fuck, that came out in 75. But uh, I did take a long time. You know, I actually did this shit on Wikipedia, the albums of 1975 and went down the list and uh, so let's start this okay again it's mine not your list <clears throat> super tramp crisis what crisis and uh, there's a lot of horns on this album and that's probably why it's all the way at the bottom because I'm not a fan of horns and clarinets and saxophones and all that but there is a song on here I absolutely love it's called ain't nobody ain't nobody but me and just that song alone it, this album needs to be on my list. I discovered this band in 1979 when I went to go visit my brother in Germany who was in the military and absolutely fell in love with the album uh, Crime of the Century. So I ended up uh, getting a couple other Super Trap albums and uh, in my opinion none of them are good, as good as that. And uh, there's uh, two other Super Trap albums. I, I think I have four in total. This is my least favorite of the four but like I said that song man Ain't Nobody But Me I love that song. So that is number 37. Okay, number 36. Now, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this band. And some of you are going to laugh and laugh and laugh, but, you know, who cares? I love ABBA. I'm a big fan of ABBA. But this is not one of my favorite ABBA albums. That's why it's really toward the bottom. But it does have some great songs. Like, the one people know is Mamma Mia, which actually I'm not a fan of the song Mamma Mia. But I do love the song S.O.S. that's on here. That's another one of the hits on here. And is there any other hit? I Do I Do is kind of a semi-hit that yeah, it's okay. But the songs I really like on here, my favorite is called uh, I've Been Waiting For You, uh, Agnetta, Agnetta, whatever, the blonde. I, I absolutely love her voice. And I love her face. And I love her. And she sings so good on that song. And I, I had to put this in there. And there's also an instrumental on here called, uh, I can't even read it, Intermission Number 1, uh, featuring uh, Benny Anderson. I don't know. I, I, and listening to that instrumental, I'm thinking, I don't know if that's a, let me look at the album. I don't know if that's an original. It kind of sounds familiar from something else. But I don't have my glasses. Let me, uh, let me cut here and grab my glasses. Okay, I'm back. And yes, uh... I'm not sure if I can even, uh, I know the, the, the last, the last name is Ulysses who wrote that song, so. Number 35. All right, here we go. An autograph by the late, great Ronnie James Dio. Trying to Burn the Sun. Now this album, I'm not the biggest Elf fan, and my favorite Elf is the first album, but uh, this one I really do like uh, Side 2 more than Side 1, especially the song uh, Shotgun Boogie. It's fucking awesome. And I just think side two is better on this. Side one is kind of like whatever. Uh, I'm not, you know, that ragtime piano type stuff. Really turns me off to Elf. But, you know, each album I did like a few songs. And this is uh, the final one. And oddly enough, the same year this came out was uh, the debut of Richie Blackmore's Rainbow with uh, Ronnie James Dio. Well, actually, the whole damn band, except for the guitar player, who is uh, Steve Edmonds. Uh, he didn't, uh, you know, it's the whole band, except for Steve Edmonds, Richie Blackmore took over, and they only played on the first Rainbow album. But that one is number 35, right? Okay. Uh, number 30... Is it 35? I don't know. Man, I'm going to fuck this up. I, I just know I'm going to fuck this up. But this one comes in at number 34. Red Octopus from Jefferson Starship. I, I, I really don't know much about Jefferson Starship, but I took a chance on this album because it has that song Miracles that I remember when I was a little kid on the radio, and I, 
I like that song, Miracles. But you know what? This song does have some cool little rocking tunes like Fat Butt Freddy. And uh, I know there was a, f a few on uh, side two. I think uh, I think the song, uh, I Want to See Another World. I could be wrong. Or Tumbling. One of those two songs. There's three really good songs on this album. And I think it's worthy of being on my list. This is Red Octopus from uh, Jefferson Starship. And all the other songs, they're passable. I can hang. So this deserves to be on my list as well. Okay, number 34? I don't know where the fuck I am. I know I'll catch up later after all these arrows that I put on my notes. Uh, I'll get it right. But here's the next one. Elton John. Um, <clears throat> this one is called Captain Fantastic and the Dirt, uh, Dirt, Brown Dirt Cowboy. Um, I really like this album a lot, actually. I just happen to like all the other ones. And this one has everything in it, you know. You think it's a double album because it has two. But no, this this brings, like, all this stuff in here. A uh, lyric book, a comic book. And I know there's other stuff, right? It brings a shitload of stuff. God, you got to love the 70s. A fan club uh, thing and a poster of the album cover. I think the album cover is all trippy and shit. But uh, I really like side two of this album, and uh, the only hit on this album is Someone Saved My Life Tonight, Sugar Bear, which is the last song on side one. And I think side one, too. I just thought it got so much better in side two. Um, but there you go. That, that one is, I guess, number 34. I don't know. Now, number 33, I don't have. I mean, I do have, but I go, went through my fucking record collection, and I can't find it. And it really pissed me off because I wanted to add it on here and show you the vinyl. And m mind you, like, my top list are, are shit I have on vinyl and a CD here and there. But uh, number 30, uh, 33 I don't have on me is Song for Song of America, Song for America from Kansas. Uh, they released two albums that year, and this one is not as good as the other one that comes up pretty shortly on the list. But it's a good album, good proggy album, and, and I dig it. So, uh, that's number 33. Fuck it, man. I'm just not going to say numbers till I get past the arrows. The next one is this one, The Outlaws. The very first Outlaws album. I, I love Southern Rock. And and what made uh, Outlaws a little more different than other Southern Rock bands was they were they had a lot of melody. And a lot of, you know, really clean singing. And, and then, you know, but then there's some songs on here that are just so fucking country bumpkin. Like, I remember I didn't like Water Waterhole, but who can't, if you love Southern Rock, who, who can deny Green Grass and High Tides? That fucking song fucking owns. And I know, um, rest in peace, uh, Hugh Thomason. And I saw this band live once, and you wouldn't believe who I saw them open for. I saw the Outlaws open for Black Sabbath on the Mob Rules Tour. And this is a good album. This is a really good album. I believe it's the first one. I could be wrong, but it says, you know, it's self-titled. Okay, next album, and I ain't going to say the number, is Fool for the City from Fog Hat. This is some good shit right here. I absolutely love the fucking title track. And, you know, Slow, Slow Ride, you know, everybody knows that. But, man, I love uh, Save Your Love for Me and uh, uh, Teleplane Blues and uh, Take It or Leave It. This is a good, solid, boogie-woogie 70s hard rock album. Here's the Kansas album that I like more than... Uh, and I think it should be higher. I'm fucking up this shit, but fuck it. I'm on a roll, and I gotta go to sleep soon, so fuck this shit. Let's just say these are my top albums, and, you know, when it, when it gets higher in the list, it's, it's more important. But this one fucking rules. The only song I can do without is track one. And it takes a, a, a woman's love to make a man. And you listen to that song, it's kind of like, this is record company pressure bullshit trying to make them do a hit single. The rest is pure prog shit I love about Kansas. Icarus, Born, born on uh, the Wings of Steel, uh, Child of Innocence, Mysteries of Mayhem, The Pinnacle. This is a great fucking album. Uh, after, after track two, to end. I dig everything except for the first track. I really dig this one, and it should be higher on my list, but I see some fuck-ups here. Oh, well. Okay, next. This band is very important to me back in the 70s. Like, <clears throat> I explained uh, when I was going to do this on my other channel that 
uh, I wasn't really into music in 1975. It was the next year, 1976, that I really got, I mean, yeah, 1976, when I really started getting into music, and a lot of the albums I bought back then were from the previous year. And a lot of them are here, but I gotta be honest, a lot of these albums I heard much later, and you already saw what album is, don't you? And this is an extremely important band to me. From my youth, uh, I really got into ELO a lot. And Face the Music is an awesome album. And uh, it has Evil Woman that everybody knows. I love that. Fire on High. That fucking instrumental fucking rules. Hey, yeah, it's got Strange Magic, uh, One Summer Dream, Knight Rider, uh, Poker. I dig this album. Uh, Face the Music. Even though uh, there's a lot of ELO albums I like much more than this one, where you will see in my future yearly, you know, best ofs, uh, I'm sure those albums are much higher on the list. But this is some good shit. I dig it. All right, next. I can't say the number. Venus and Mars from Paul McCartney and Wings. Uh, this song, I mean, it's spotty, but the reason why I put it higher than these albums, because some of these albums are more solid than this. I think Mask is a more solid album than this. But there's songs on here that I like even more than any songs on Mask. Like um, Letting Go. I absolutely love that song. There's Medicine Jar. Medicine Jar's on here. Uh, Venus and Mars, Rock Show, and then the hit, what's the hit on this one? Listen to what the man said, uh, and uh, I really, really dig this song, this album, uh, but it is very spotty, but uh, it's good, it's a good album, and that's why it's on my list. This one definitely should be higher, I'm more of an Alice Cooper band fan, you know, the early Alice Cooper stuff, but Welcome to My Nightmare, his first album as, you know, without the Alice Cooper band. It's fucking awesome. I mean, you know, Black Widow, uh, Cold Ethel, Steven, Escape. A lot of good shit on here, but it gets a little too strange at some parts. It gets a little too out there, but I still dig it, and it definitely deserves to be on my list. I know a lot of you Alice Cooper fans would like it much more higher, but that's what makes uh, you different than me. All right, the next one, Fandango, ZZ Top. And this fucking rules. Heard it on the X's, you know. Uh, it has some live stuff. Mm. Uh, nasty Dogs and Funky Kings. Oh my God, this is some killer shit. The debut album from Heart, Dreamboat Annie. I love this album. I bought this album way in the 70s. And I remember, I am, you know, I'm not going to lie. When I hit puberty, there were many a nights. Where's the picture? Where's that picture? Right there. That picture there. Yeah. See Ann Wilson's jugs? I masturbated a lot to that picture. You know, I looked around and stuff and, you know, and, but you know, I actually like, uh, I think Nancy's prettier, but I love Ann Wilson. She's, she's gorgeous. Look at that. She's beautiful. And this sound fucking rocks. I mean, everybody knows uh, Magic Man and Crazy on You and, and a lot of people also know the, the title track, which is there's three versions of it on here. My favorite song on here is Sing Child, but I love White Whiskey and Wine, um, uh, Soul of the Sea, and I love that title track. I love all three versions of the title track. I think I'm gonna have to go with the first one, the first version where it's just mellow. This is a great fucking album. Low on my list, but I don't give a fuck. It's great, I just like these more. Next. Deep Purple, come and taste the band. This is when Richie Blackmore left. Tommy Bowling came in. Maybe low on my list, but I would say this is an extremely underrated album. You know, since it doesn't have Blackmore. It gets very overlooked, but man, coming home, Lady Luck, Dealer, uh, Love Child, you keep on moving. This is classic shit, man. And it should get more praise. It should even get more praise on my list. Why is it so low? Because I just happen to like the other ones more. But I absolutely love this album. And uh, cool little gatefold with, you know, collage of the band. And absolutely good shit. Had to make my list. All right, next. I think one of the most underrated Who albums. This one. Uh, by Numbers. <clears throat> with, uh, you know, Squeezebox is the one everybody loves. But, man, I love uh, Slip Kid. How, how, however much booze. What a great fucking song. Uh, Imagine a Man. God, it's so beautiful. I love Roger Daltrey's voice on that one. 
uh, red, uh, blue, red, and gray. Uh, you know, they are all in love. Success story. I absolutely love this album a lot. And I'm wearing a hoop shirt. And uh, but this is a great fucking album. Very underrated. All right, next. And a lot of people are gonna say you put this shit above fucking the Who. You fucking retard. But I love it, man. Equinox by Styx. This is the last album with uh, John Koleski. Am I uh, pronouncing his name right? The guitar player? His name is John Kurolewski. Whatever the fuck. It's very long last name. Uh, I believe it's the first one on A&M Records. Uh, they released a few albums on Wooden Nick Nickel Records, which I have a box set of all the CDs of... Uh, that era, which is good shit, but this album fucking owns. Born for Adventure. Fuck yeah. Midnight Ride, heavy as fuck. And, you know, the one everybody knows is Sweet Madam Blue, which I, I consider a fucking masterpiece. Uh, Lights Up, right? Isn't Lights Up on this? The track listening is, is it even on there? Oh yeah, here it is. Lights Up, L'Oreal. Um, but Side 2 is the shit. Side 1's okay. Side two's incredible because it's a one, two, three, a uh, punch with a little instrumental before Sweet Madam Blue. Midnight Ride, Board for Adventure, Sweet Madam Blue in the prelude song. Yeah, I think it, it's better than the Who by Numbers. So eat me. All right. Now, oh, oh, man. This one I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for, for it being so low. Because a lot of people would put this at number one. But, hey, I love Equinox, and I think this one's even better than Equinox. And I think this is a great album. I really do. All right. Some people are going to fucking get pissed now. Wish You Were Here from Pink Floyd. Classic as fuck. You know, uh, Have a Cigar. My favorite track on here is the title track. It's the most popular one, but I think it's a, uh, a fucking great. Welcome to the Machine. Uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Every song on here is good. Uh, and the reprise of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. That's pretty much all the songs. I always love that album cover. I have a shirt like that somewhere. I don't know where it is. Yeah, Pink Floyd. Definitely needs to be on my list. I like these more than the Pink Floyd album, so fuck you. Hair of the Dog. This album fucking rules. Nazareth. My favorite Nazareth album. Man, Don't Judas Me. Miss Mistreated. What else is on here? Change in Time. I think this album's awesome beginning to end. The title track. Everybody knows Love Hurts, uh, Beggar's Day, uh, Rose in the Heather. This is as classic as 70s can get. I guess now I can say the numbers. Number at number 17. Now, mind you, these all made the top 20, Pink Floyd and Nazareth and Sticks. So it's not that bad. Come on, relax. Chill with your anus muscles. The Scorpions in trance. Fuck yeah, my favorite era is the Uli era. And fucking Dark Lady in Trance, Top of the Bill, Robot Man, Nightlight, uh, Son of My Hand, Loves Like a River. Some fucking awesome shit. This is my Scorpions right here. Even though I, I discovered them with Love Drive. But, woof. And not my favorite of the Uli stuff, but you'll see my favorite one gets much higher on the list when I get to that year. All right, next. And this band released two albums on this year, and I'm gonna go with the one that came out first, because I thought the other one was better, but I love this album. Shit, I love these albums, and I love this one a little more. Fly By Night by Rush, fuck, Anthem, best I can. Beneath, Between, Behind is like one of the heaviest, fastest Rush songs. By Tour in the Snow Dog, of course, uh, the title track and Making Memories, Riverdale. In the end, good shit. Force It, which is number 15 on my list. UFO Force It. Let It Roll. Shoot, shoot. Uh, out in the streets. Mother Mary. Jesus Christ, this album rolls. Uh, this kid's. Uh, it's fucking awesome. Love it. This is a classic album. Force It, but not my favorite UFO album. But it's fucking awesome, and it deserves to be in the top 20. So now we're going to number 14. 
The live album from Blois to Cult. My favorite of the live albums. Some Enchanting Evenings wasn't bad, but it's not even the pimple of this album. One of the most underrated live albums, in my opinion. This fucking album rules. Okay, this is one that technically didn't come out. This is one of the albums I added on here. Because somebody already showed me their list and they added this album. And I'm like, wait, that album didn't come out in 75. So I did a little research. Turned out the American version came out in 1975. And the, the track listing is different than the version in the UK. And here's a band I absolutely fucking love. Desolation Boulevard from fucking Sweet. Ballroom Blitz set me free. Ballroom Blitz is what was added on this one. I think Fox on the Run wasn't on the original either. Uh, what else is on here? Into the Night. No, you don't. The 16s. I want to be committed. ACDC. Um, great, great album. Um, pretty much beginning to end. Classic. Classic. And my favorite sweet album right here. Desolation Boulevard. Okay, next. Yeah, and I like it more than Wish You Were Here. Bite me. All right, number 11. Uh, we're cracking into the top 10. This one did not make the top 10, but it's so close. And it is my favorite of the first three albums from this band. Dress to Kill by Kiss. At number 11, love it. Very short, but fuck, dude. Come on and love me. Room service, two-timer, uh, ladies I'm waiting, rock bottom, dude. Uh, and fucking love her all I can. Jesus Christ. This album rocks, and in my opinion, Peter Chris is the VIP on this album. Fucking rule. This is a, I think Peter Chris's best playing can be heard on the third Kiss album, Dress to Kill, at number 11. Now we're going in to the top 10. ACDC, TNT. Well, I might as well say High Voltage as well. Because it's pretty much both the same albums. A couple of songs are different. This one was the Australian version. This one was from America. And the first uh, ACDC album. And fuck, dude. TNT, everybody knows. But uh, it's a long way to the top. Super classic. Uh, Live Wire. Can I Sit Next to You, Girl? She's Got Balls. Little Lover title track. The Jack. Live Wire. Fuck yeah. Deserves to be in the top ten. Huge fan of ACDC. Should be higher. Okay, I had to edit this because I had to go wipe the sweat off my my forehead. I was uh, freaking out, like thinking a Pink Floyd fan spiking my food with acid, turning me into like a Sid Barrett type, like to lose my mind. Or like maybe Elton John fans hitting me with their man purse. So uh, I was sweating profusely and I had to go wipe myself off. And another thing I should have brought up when I pulled up the Nazareth is this CD, I want to jank, uh, thank Joseph Staub for getting me this. Uh, this is a, a special edition of Hair of the Dog, which brings uh, single versions and B-sides and there's some BBC recordings. It's fucking awesome. Thank you, Joseph. He bought me some other Nazareth CDs that will be on my uh, future list because what he got me so far from uh, the Nazareth stuff, it's all fucking great. My second favorite is another one he got me. I believe that one came out next year. So, uh, the next episode, you'll see me talk about it. All right, at number... Where are we now? Number nine. The other Rush album, Caress of Steel. I put this one above Fly By Night for Necromancer alone. But doesn't this have Bastille Day? Yeah, and uh, Lakeside Park. Uh, and, you know, that whole second side, it's all trippy and long and stuff, and... Uh, I absolutely love this album. Fuck yeah. Caress of Steel at number nine. At number eight, a very extremely special band to me. I was born, I was raised, I was born in upstate New York, but then I was raised in Hialeah, which is all Cubans now. But back in the day, it was a bunch of rednecks. I was, uh, it was actually more of a melting pot. There was a lot of rednecks, and this is a band that I got turned on to as a young child, and I am a fanatic when it comes to Leonard fucking Skinner, baby. Nothing fancy. This is the one with On the Hunt, right? No, it's not. Oh, yeah. On the Hunt's on here. That song's one of my favorites. And uh, Whiskey Rock and Roller Saturday Night Special. Come on, man. This one fucking... Am I losing? Uh, there's just a lot of great stuff on here. believe it's the first one with uh, Artemis Pyle. And the last one with uh, the great Ed King. 
Now I'm getting a flashback. I'm starting to sweat again thinking about Pink Floyd fans saying, you picked Skinner over Floyd? All right, number did, 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 seven. Fuck yeah. Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, which is Elf with Richie Blackmore. Dude, you want to talk about fucking classic. Man of the Silver Mountain self-portrait? Jesus. Uh, Cast the Rainbow, Snake Charmer, Temple of the King. One of the greatest ballads ever. Uh, 16th century screen sleeves. The cover of uh, Still I'm Sad. Hell yeah. Love this fucking album. Now, at number six. And uh, this is one I bought in the 70s. And you'll, I never got another copy of it. As you can see, this one uh, was destroyed by a waterbed accident I had in the 80s. The first album by Ted fucking Nugent, baby. This album fucking rules. I don't give a fuck about what the hell he talks about now, politics and all that shit. This is all about the music, motherfucker. Stranglehold, Motor City Madman, uh, Hey Baby, Stormtrooping, Snakeskin Cowboy, you know, uh, God, Queen of the Forest. This is fucking, this is epic hard rock shit. Absolutely love the first Ted Nugent album. And I have it on CD, but I really do need to upgrade this shit because look how fucked up. Look at the back of this. This album, but you know, the vinyl's still in good condition. Epic Records. Okay, let me put this aside. I'll put this back later because we're on a roll here, man. Uh, number five. Top five now, and boy, this deserves to be in the number five for sure. Queen Night at the Opera. Just for Death on Two Legs and Prophet Song alone. This needs to be all the way up there. But, you know, it also has a lot of other good ones. Uh, You're My Best Friend. What a great, beautiful fucking ballad -y kind of uplifting song. Love of My Life. What an amazing ballad. Of course, we all know Bohemian Rhapsody, a song I never get sick of. And I saw the movie uh, a couple weeks ago, and I liked it a lot. 39, a great song with uh, Brian May singing. In Love of My Car, the song that Roger... Roger Taylor wrote, and uh, if you've ever seen the movie, they, they talk about the song in a kind of funny way. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the way that Roger checked the, the gas in his gas tank uh, was with his cock. He really was in love with this car. All right, at number four. Fuck yeah. Wow, this one rules. Toys in the Attic, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm a little burnt out on Walk This Way and Sweet Emotions, but, dude, Toys in the Attic, Uncle Salty, Adam's Apple, wow. Um, ten, big 10-inch, great fucking novelty tune. And, of course, Side 2 is uh, more heavier uh, with my favorite song on this album. Pro one of my favorite fucking um, Aerosmith songs, No More, No More. Baby, I'm a dreamer. Got my horse and carriage. And of course, rounding it off is round and round. And the great, great uh, ballad, You See Me Crying. This album fucking rolls. And it's, uh, it's, it's not overrated. It's rated perfectly. This is classic, classic Aerosmith. And deserves to be at number four. All right, number three. Okay, this one's going to surprise some people there. Because uh, you a lot of you probably think I'd put this at number one. But no. I have to put, and because uh, it's my favorite band of all time. I actually put two albums above this. And, hey, motherfucking Sabbath fans, don't look down on me on this, because this is a fucking amazing album. Sabotage, hey, it's all the way at number three. What do you want? Megalomania. I mean, every fucking song. Listen to the Rock and Metal Combat podcast. We just recently reviewed it. I, love, I even love fucking Am I Going Insane Radio, which I didn't as a kid. But I woke up, the writ, hole in the sky, symptom of the universe, the thrill of it all. Won't you help me, Mr. Jesus? Fuck yeah. Super czar. Weird fucking instrumental. Hell yeah. This one should be number one, but I'm going to hold up an album now that this band is nowhere as near as good as Black Sabbath. Not even close, but I got to give it. I got to give it to this album. I just have to give it to this album. At number two, fuck yeah, Kiss Alive. Kiss Alive, man. 
I know a lot of you fucks hate kids. Well, fuck you. I don't care. Kiss Alive. You want to talk about a seminal live album. Uh, I think it's the album that started the live album craze. I know I brought that up before and somebody mentioned Humble Pie. And I was like, no. Live at Leeds? No. I love Live at... Shit, I'd probably even put Live at Leeds tied with this one. But I think this is the one that, you know, the double album and, you know, all these live albums. I think this is what started the craze. And this album is just fucking perfect from beginning to end. Touched Up? I love fake live albums. But there you go, number two. So, there can only be one. Number one on my list, and I didn't feel like pulling out the big box I bought from this album, because this is my favorite album from this band, and I don't give a fuck what anybody says. This one is definitely number one in my world. Physical Graffiti, the greatest Led Zeppelin album, hands down, in the light, custard pie, the, want, the wonton song. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. Down by the Seaside, Custard Pie, The Rover, In My Time of Dying, Cashmere. Fuck, man. Night Flight, In the Light. Every fucking song on here is a winner. A fucking winner. Number one, Physical Graffiti. And there you go, my friends. That's my list in here. Now I can show you. Look at all these fucking arrows and shit all over the goddamn place. You know, here's where I got them all right. See, I didn't change 1 through 17. 1 through 17 stayed uh, loyal. But hope you enjoyed my uh, 1975 favorite albums. If I missed some that you think should be on the list, write it down below and say, hey, man, I think this, but I don't know if you do or not. And if you put up something that I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot that one, I will respond to it because I'm curious to see uh, your list, uh, especially ones that I missed. Uh, but, you know, if, you, if you're if you just going to name albums I, I uh, listed in your order, that's fine and all. That's you and you know, me. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is the first one. I'm not going to do every year till now. I'm probably going to end in the 80s somewhere because it, it gets a little too convoluted in the 90s. A little too fucking out there in 2000s and 2001s and shit. I just want to deal with my childhood. And I'm going to go, you know, I know I'll go I'll go deep into the 80s. Don't worry about it. Shit, maybe up to 89. Maybe not. But anyway, I'll be putting uh, these up whenever I can. Thank you again for watching again. And keep on trucking, man, the 70s later. This video has been brought to you by Miami Metal Merchant. For your metal needs at competitive prices, visit MiamiMetalMerchant.com. Tell them Dr. Fuck sent you.